Hey, and welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to work on increasing our speed and dexterity. So this is gonna be a, a technique building lesson. And when it comes to building our speed and dexterity, there are many different ways that, that you can go about it. But it, with this particular set of exercises, what we're gonna do is we're going to take a little bit less traditional a, a, approach. Typically, when players work on speed, what they like to do is take a metronome, set the clicks at a very slow tempo, play a particular phrase or scale or some other type of pattern, play it at a very slow and controlled tempo, work at mastering that before raising the, the, the uh, metronome marking and then doing the same thing over and over again. Well, what ends up happening is over time, you raise the tempo faster and faster and faster. We eventually get to a point where, where we reach a breaking point. And the breaking point is the place at which we can no longer sustain that speed or we can no longer play clean at that speed. And that, that basically becomes sort of like our, our maximum bench press, right? If you we were gonna compare it to working out, that would be our max bench press. And that, that weight would then regulate what lower weight reps we'd be doing after that. Well, in the same way, with a metronome marking that's sort of being identified as our maximum tempo, we can break that up into smaller tempos to start working from, to work on our speed, work back up to that highest tempo to see if we can bust through it. The problem is that for most players, once we reach that, that brick wall of our, of our tempo limitation, it's very, very hard to, to bust through that. And I talk to a lot of players that tell me I have, I'm working for weeks and months at a time and trying to increase my, my tempo past this, this marking. I'm never able to, to really do it. What can I do to increase my speed? Well, I experienced the exact same thing at, when I was working on technique and it took me a long, long time, but I finally figured out that the problem wasn't so much the speed itself or, or the ability for my fingers to move fast enough to, to keep up with the tempo. The problem was more so my mind getting in the way. And what I mean by that is when you practice technique and, and particularly when you're working on your speed and you're, you're, you're monitoring your progress with, with metronome markings, we set up particular expectations for ourselves. And if you've kind of already registered it in your mind that you have a maximum tempo, well, if you're keeping track of what the metronome marking when, is when, when you practice, the closer and closer you get to that tempo, the more your mind is going to kind of be signaling to you, hey, you're getting close to your limitation. That little message that, that plays in our mind can absolutely work against us when we're trying to pass through uh, into that, that next level of, of development. And what I finally figured out is that sometimes we have to trick our mind or distract our, our mind long enough to allow our bodies to go ahead and pass through to that, to that next level. But that's not always inherently obvious you know, to us. It, it's, it's the kind of thing that it should be black and white, right? Well, if I practice at fast speeds, faster and faster speeds, I should be able to play faster. Well, this is the, this is the thing that I wanna to try to address in, in this exercise. And we're going to work on what I call a speed doubling or a, or a tempo doubling exercise. And the sole purpose of this is to allow you to break through your expectation of what your limitation is gonna be. And we're gonna do that with a series of patterns that are played at two different speeds. It's gonna be, they're gonna be played at a normal speed and then they're going to be played at a speed that is twice that of normal speed. So the way it's gonna work is we're gonna take a particular uh, pattern that I'm just gonna um, show you. I'm gonna demonstrate how to play. And we're going to play that pattern at a very slow, comfortable tempo. We're gonna do that three times in a row. But then when we get to the fourth time, we're actually going to play it at double time. And then after that double time iteration, we're gonna start the cycle back over again. So essentially what we're gonna be doing with this pattern is we're gonna play it three times slow, one times fast. Three times slow, one times fast. Three times slow, one times fast. We're gonna keep that cycle going over and over again. And this is so that we can get a bit of a taste of the faster tempo without having things get out of control or completely outside of our comfort zone. So here's the pattern that, that we're gonna work on. It, this, this actually comes from uh, six notes of a, of a major scale, specifically an A major scale. 
And these are the notes that, that we're gonna be playing on our bass. And it doesn't matter if you have a four string, a five string, or a six string, you'll be able to play this on, on your instrument. We're gonna start from the sixth fret D string. And that note is a, is a G sharp. And what we're gonna do is we're going to cover the notes G sharp, A, B. All three of those notes are gonna be played on the D string. Then we're gonna to go to the G string and play the notes C sharp, D, and E. So those six notes are gonna make up this pattern, but I'm gonna show you the order of those notes now. We are going to start with the G sharp and we're gonna walk up to the C sharp. So we're going to go G sharp, A, B, C sharp, and then we're going to walk back down to the G sharp, B, A, G sharp. That's the first half of it. And then we're going to walk all the way up to the E, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, E, and then walk back down, D, C sharp, B, A, G, okay? So if I, if I play it in its entirety, it's gonna sound like this. That's the pattern. And you're gonna see that this pattern actually lays over an even two measure length. So I'm gonna demonstrate this with the metronome. I'm gonna play along with, with the metronome. I'm gonna play eighth notes at 70 beats per minute. Okay, so the, the clicks are actually on the quarter notes. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna play on the eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. Okay, so here's the, here's the shape. Play it one more time. Two, three and four and. Okay, so if I play it and count it at the same time, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. So as you can see, it fits perfectly into a two measure length of time. And this is important because playing a symmetric pattern like this that sits nice and even inside a, a measure or two measure uh, boundary, it just makes it easier for, for you to cycle the pattern and makes it easier for your mind to reinitialize what you have to play after each iteration, okay? So you can play any type of pattern with, with this exercise. You can use a, a scale form, an arpeggio form. You can use a fragment of, of, of any one of those things. But the important thing is that you're just following the, the basic concept of going three slow, one fast, three slow, one fast. All right, so now I'm gonna demonstrate the exercise and I'm going to play three at the normal tempo and then I'm gonna play one at the double time tempo and I'm gonna cycle that a couple times through so you can hear it. And this is how the exercise is, is gonna sound. Two, three, and four, and. time. Here's the second time. Here's the third time through. Now the fourth time is going to be twice as fast. Back to the first time through, which is slow. Second time through. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense for you. And this is the type of exercise that just as with the, you know, the traditional approach where we start with the slow tempo and then we just raise it slowly and, you know, and try to try to build up the, the level of challenge, you can do the same thing here. But what's, what's really cool about this is that we're staggering the, the tempos because of the way the exercise is laid out. So our mind is basically, you can think about it as shocking our system in a way. When we get to that fourth iteration and we're going double time, all of a sudden it's something that steps outside of the, the comfort zone of the, of the slower tempo. And this is, this is really the key to the exercise because it, it sort of takes our mind by, by surprise 
allows us to go there just long enough to where it starts to feel a little bit fast or, or outside our comfort zone, but then we immediately come back to our comfort zone. So you never really, you never really have an opportunity to, to completely fall apart with this. And the, the faster you go with the tempos, the more the, the stagger effect helps you to build your technique. Because if you think about it, it's like when you're playing through the, the exercise, you have the tempo that begins down here, jumps up here for a moment, then comes back down. So now when we raise our tempo, our slower tempo gets higher. And so now we're jumping from here to up here. And so we have this, this neat staggered step ladder approach to, to building speed that once again fools our mind, distracts us enough to allow our hands to, to kind of go to that, that more challenging place without, without experiencing a real problem. Now, as you work through this, when you get to the faster and faster tempos, and after you've had some, some time to digest this for a while, you're gonna realize that a, a very interesting thing starts to happen. And that is your, your plucking hand, when you go to the double time, it almost goes to, uh, to like an autopilot mode. It, the, the faster tempos, when you play them, are going to start to feel more, more natural, for that matter, almost more subconscious. Your fingers are gonna be able to move quickly automatically on their own, you're gonna be conditioning that, that ultra fast muscle memory to where that's never going to feel like a, a surprise to you whenever you're trying to learn something you know, challenging or you get faced with, uh, play, you know, faced with a musical part that requires you to suddenly have a burst of speed. And um, you know, there are lots of different scenarios in which you, know, you might experience that. But once again, you know, all in the name of headroom, we're going to we're going to be working on this to the point to where this becomes so internalized the fast feels as natural to us as the slow does. So remember that as as you're moving forward. So just for fun I want to get into the the real fast tempos and I'm going to take this this 70 beats per minute and I'm going to double it to 140 just to to allow you there's 140 right there just to allow you to kind of hear how how the cycle how the cycle goes when the when the tempos get really fast. So I'm going to play eighth notes at 140 beats per minute, and then I'm going to jump to double time in the same way we did on the in the exercise just before this. All right, one, two, one and two and three and four and. to expand the exercise is to take this this same basic idea but work on your endurance at the same time so one of the best ways to work on your endurance is to take the double time iterations and have them go longer so for example instead of going three slow one fast three slow one fast you could do three slow two fast three slow two fast or even three slow three fast or any other combination that's going to challenge you so here's an example of how that might be put together. One, two, three, and four, and. Now I'm gonna to go too fast. There's my first. Here's my second. Here's my third. Fifth, back to one. Okay, and then you can extend that as as, as many as you like. And um, it's fun to it's fun to play at the at the faster tempos and, and challenge yourself just to you know, see how developed that, that muscle memory is. But um, this is an exercise approach that will fortunately yield very fast results. And 
you're really going to be pleased. If, if you dig into this, I think you're going to be surprised at, at how much you, your technique really, really improves. So I hope you enjoy working on this and uh, have fun practicing.